episode 31, welcome back. We're at example three, and before we tackle example three, let's look at the rational zero theorem. And what this is doing, and this is generating a list of starting points, and I'll explain that as I go along. But I want you to hear it's gonna generate a list of starting points. Or I should say, if I wanna be technical, of possible starting points. So if you remember in example two, I started you by saying five is a zero of the function. But what, what do you do when I don't start you anywhere? All right, well, that means we want to just generate a list of all possible zeros. So here's how this goes. The rational zero theorem states that if the polynomial, here's your polynomial, x to the power n with its coefficient, there's my lead term, all the way down descending powers of x down to the constant, if it has integer coefficients, then every rational zero of f of x has the form p over q, where p is a factor of the constant term a sub zero, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient a sub n. So the two most important numbers that are gonna come into play when we apply the rational zero theorem are a sub n and a sub zero, and we're respectively gonna talk about them as p's and q's. All right, so it says consider this polynomial function 8x to the fourth minus 20x, 26x cubed minus 27x squared plus 11x plus four. And it says list all possible rational zeros. So we're just gonna generate a list of possible starting points. And you wanna look at the coefficient of your first term, your leading term, and your constant. And so let's start with the lowest degree. We'll, we'll talk about this as p. So p, we wanna look at the factors of your constant, which in this case is four. All right, so p is a factor of the constant term. So you want you to think about what integers or what four factors into, and plus or minus one is a factor of four, plus or minus two, and plus or minus four. Those all divide evenly into this constant term. Now in terms of q's, it's a factor of the leading coefficient, and the leading coefficient in this case is eight. So my q's are always a factor of my leading coefficient. So what divides nicely into eight? Well, one, two, four, and then eight. All right, so this is helping us generate this list of possible zeros, and not all of these work. It's impossible for all of them to work because if you have a degree four polynomial, at most four of these are going to work. So we're going to get a lot of answers or a lot of possible zeros that don't actually pan out. Once you've generated your list of P's and Q's, put them as ratios, all right? That's why it's called the rational zero theorem. We're gonna create fractions. So I'm gonna take every P and put it in ratio to every Q and create that list. So I'm gonna scooch this up so that we can see my list get generated. All right, so once I have that, here we go. This is my possible rational zeros. And I'm gonna try and be methodical about this. So I'm gonna take every P and divide it by every Q. So I'm gonna start with a P value of plus or minus one. So one divided by one is one. So I will put that into my list. One divided by two, right? This P over this Q is one half. All right, that's a rational number. It's a fraction, a ratio. I've got one divided by four, so plus or minus one fourth. I've got one divided by eight, so plus or minus one eighth. And I'm not done, I gotta keep on going. Let me go over to the other p value of two. So I would do two divided by one, plus or minus two. Two divided by two is one, I already have that in my list, and I don't need to put repeats. Two divided by four is one half, I already have that. And two divided by eight is one fourth, I already have it, okay. Let's move over to four. Four divided by one is four, that is not in my list. All right, four divided by two is two, got it. Four divided by four is one, got it. Four divided by eight is one half, got it. Oops, so that's it, there's the end of my list. I don't need a comma here. All right, so I want you to see we generated two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We generated 12 possible zeros. Now, not all of these are going to work and we're gonna test them out on the next page, but 
pre-calculators, all right, before technology, and this is, I, I get to be one of those people now that says like, back in my day, this is what I did, and this is what I did. I sat there and I generated this list, and this was a starting point. Without any technology, I knew that, or I didn't know, but if, if one of these was gonna work, it was gonna be in this list. So I would just sit there and guess and check with synthetic division until I found one that worked. And some days I would get lucky, like the first one I picked worked, right? Maybe positive one works, or maybe negative four works, and those were the ones I had picked. And I'll show you what I mean when we get to example four. Because some days I would get pretty unlucky, and it, would, it wouldn't be till I got to like negative one eighth where I would find a possible zero. All right, so with that, we've seen how we can generate a starting point, all of these possible starting points. Let's take this idea and play it out, and then let's actually go find all the, the rational zeros that we can for this polynomial, all right? I'll see you in a bit, bye.